join us as we unravel the mystery behind Muti. Welcome to the Department of Botany and Plant Biotechnology here at the University of Johannesburg. Well, good afternoon. <laughs> I am Professor Anna Mutiti. I'm the Head of the Department of Botany and Plant Biotechnology. So, Prof, what is the study of botany? Okay, in short, botany is the study of plants. Study. Yeah, the study of plants. So basically we study everything that is to know about plants. Where do they live? How do they grow? How do they reproduce? When are they sick? How do they defend themselves? Um, how do they look like? How do we distinguish them from each other? Because as you know, they all look the same. I yeah. think most people don't notice plants because they all look the same. So, 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 so botanists also study how they differ from each other, what makes them differ from each other. So, yeah. so is there a link between botany and muti? Right, so as you know, muti basically comprises mostly of uh, plants. Uh, people also use animals, animal products for muti, but muti, which is basically traditional medicine, actually involves mainly the use of plants. So it's important for botanists to know what people are using out there. Yeah. What would we use muti for? Okay, so there's a number of things that we would look at. If you want to identify, because muti, usually you get it in parts, in small pieces. So in order to be able to identify which plants are they, then we can use uh, a technique that is called DNA barcoding, which Didi works on and which the ACDB works on as well. But there are other things that you can do, that you can do to test the plant, depending on the pla what the plant is used traditionally for. You can test, for example, the chemistry, right? what chemical constituents does it have? Because mainly for, med for a plant to be medicinally important, it has certain useful chemicals. Yes. So one can identify those. One can also look at, for example, if the plant is used to cure infectious diseases. One can look at its antimicrobial activity to see if it indeed kills the pathogens and which pathogens it kills. Yeah. In the botany department, since there are different areas to study, can you just highlight some of those? Okay, so in the department we've got, so as you know, botany basically has got three fundamental disciplines. It's anatomy, it's physiology, and it's taxonomy. So in this department, we pride ourselves in having maintained those three main uh, disciplines. But also attached to that is also the applied, the more the applied um, sort of fields of specialty. But for example, if you studying a plant, you need to know how does it look like structurally. So you look at its anatomy, right? Right. So you need to understand its anatomy in order for you to be able to know why does it react the way it does, how, why does it look the way it does, and. Those particular reactions are now encapsulated in physiology, the field of plant physiology. Right, so you look at, for example, uh, which hormones does it have, what hormones make it rap, the, the fruits ripen, why do leaves change their color in, in autumn, and so on and so on. So that is a field of plant physiology. Right, and then um, another fundamental discipline is plant taxonomy. This is where now we go out in the field, we collect the plants, we identify them, we classify them according to their similarities. And then other people can use those plants um, in many different ways. So then, yes, exactly, basically. So you look at its morphology, you look at its anatomy as well. Um, there's a lot of things that you can look at. One can look at the, the pollen uh, type and so on in order for you to be able to classify. So there's a lot of morphological characters that one looks at in order to be able to identify a plant, in order to be able to classify a plant. But then we also have these uh, other applied, more applied. So we've got uh, biotechnology is a field of, of specialty that we're also very strong in, biotechnology. The other one is basically molecular, uh, molecular systematics, you call it that way. It's very closely linked or related to taxonomy because you can also use DNA to be able to classify plants depending on how uh, to look at how, relate, how closely related they are. So how does the African Centre for DNA Barcoding fit into the department? Okay, so, so the African Centre for DNA Barcoding basically um, 
train students. That, that is the main uh, priority, I think, of the center as part of the department, to train students in DNA barcoding, but that is not the only thing that they do. So, so um, DNA barcoding uh, lab um, also teaches students other things related to DNA. So anything that has to do with DNA is done in this lab. So DNA barcoding is just one section of those. So in, if you want to look at, for example, how species in a particular group relate to each other, you can look at their DNA. And there are many different genes that you can use, re gene regions that you can use. But DNA barcoding basically uses more or less fingerprinting, uses uh, short sequences of a particular section of particular DNA in order to be able to identify organisms to their species. So it's basically not, does not identify an individual, but it identifies which group of species it, 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 it could be. And for anybody out there who actually wants to study botany, why should they come to UJ to actually join us here and study botany? Well, as I've already indicated to you, there, there is so much diversity in this department. First of all, if you've, as you've said, um, everybody works very well. Um, I mean, most people study their own fields individually, but as a group, I think we are quite a very strong group. Um, we've got um, taxonomists, so if you need to know, I mean, let me start by saying South Africa is blessed in the plant biodiversity that, that we have. I don't know if you, you know that actually South Africa is third in terms of um, biodiversity, after, only after Brazil and Malaysia, richness. in terms of biodiversity richness. So, so um, to be able to study the biodiversity, to be able to classify those plants, to be able to identify, there's still so much out there to be identified. Uh, almost on, a, on, a, on an annual basis, we, we discover several new species. So, so um, I think that would be important, and it's important also for us to determine what biodiversity we have in order to be able to know what to conserve. So it's important for conservation, for example. So many of things, the things that we do in botany can be applied in many other different fields. Um, physiology, plant physiology, for example, can be used uh, in collaboration with the markets you know, um, the, the retailers, for example, if you wanted to advise re retailers on when to harvest tomatoes, for example, what to use to, to ripen the tomatoes without affecting the quality and the taste and, and so on and so on. Um, in anatomy, um, we study wood anatomy, for example. So would you be able to identify a piece of wood, for example, based on, on, on anatomy? So each of, each of these things are interlinked to, to each other. So you could still study anatomy, but you can link it to molecular work because you can use DNA barcoding and then you can use anatomy and link those two to see whether they talk to each other or not. So there's so much that one can do. There's so much uh, diversity as well. So yeah. what I hear is that I, as a student, have the opportunity to actually stay in the department, but just work with different things and improve my skills. Yes. So there's room for improvement, and I guess always looking for new blood. Yes, yes, and yes, today. absolutely, absolutely, so, yeah. Given my field of study, how does Muti actually fit into botany? Right, uh, so as you know, um, so indigenous, no indigenous knowledge is obviously very, very important. So that's basically what is being applied in the multi markets. So people know that these plants work. So they bring them to the multi market and then they sell them. And how do you know what plant it is? Yes. You know? so, so, your, your, so your project is very, very important because then it tells us what plant it is. If you remember the history of drugs, I actually started with plants. Take a, a typical example of uh, the willow tree. You remember that aspirin is basically salicylic acid, which was first identified, uh, which was first discovered from a willow tree. The willow tree has been used for many, many, many years, but people did not know actually what was the active ingredient. Okay, now salicylic acid is manufactured, but it's based on the salicylic acid that was actually found in a willow tree. So many, many, many plants have been used for generations. But I think in terms of uh, drug development, we also know that there are many drugs or there are many pathogens which are becoming resistant now to drugs. So people are looking at plants as an alternative um, of, uh, you know, um, Western 
um, medicines. So in order for, for us to try and develop drugs that are effective, less side effects and so on and so on, people are now looking at plants. So it's, your, your part is very, very important because if somebody says this is such and such a plant, I cannot confirm if, if I'm looking at the root. Even for me as a taxonomist, I can hardly identify a plant simply by looking at its roots. If you're very, very experienced, you can. But there's so many plants and they look the same. So once you've identified the plant, there are so many things that can happen then towards uh, uh, drug development. One can then look at the chemistry. So which compounds are active in this particular uh, plant? And then one can take it further, look at um, its biological activity. There's so much that you can do. One can look at the anti-inflammatory properties. One can look at the antibacterial uh, properties, antifungal, antiviral, depending on the plant, what the plant is used for um, traditionally. So basically, identifying a plant is important for yeah. us to do the other steps exactly. that lead to drug development. Exactly. Mm. Right. Mm. So anything you'd like to say to everybody watching? Well, I'd like to say that, uh, first of all, uh, the University of Johannesburg is a place to be and uh, the Department of Botany and Plant Bi Biotechnology is um, the best. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? It is, yeah, it is. So you, you are more than welcome, yeah. If a student does actually come to the department, what kind of support do they get? The University of Johannesburg does provide support in terms of financially and we also do have um, the infrastructure is adequate. If it is not adequate then we find ways to actually try and accommodate you. So we do uh, support students quite a lot, um, whether financially, whether emotionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. So, so we are quite. Um, we had a, a recent uh, a review, not so recently, but about three, four years ago. And most of our postgraduate students actually are very, very happy to be in this department because they feel that we take care of them. We, we are more. This is basically their home. Yeah, that's how. That's how we see it.